a delegation of three MEPs visited Palestine to witness at first hand the situation in the West Bank, to see for themselves how ordinary people are managing in their day-to-day -day lives with all of the challenges that they face. We wanted to come and see what things were like now in the West Bank, what the situation was, um, to visit and to speak to as many people as we possibly could, and to report back, of course, to our colleagues in the European Parliament. I think that um, we've had a, a few days packed full of, of visits and we have met a real cross-section of uh, society here, politicians, people um, in schools, uh, the refugee camp, all sorts of, of people. And uh, the, the message seems to be the same, that things aren't good, that things haven't improved in, in many years. And in fact, they're getting worse politically because the, the possibility of the Palestinian state being established seems a far away dream now. Hebron es el símbolo, es el ejemplo vivo de este sistema de discriminación. Es tan dura la vida allí que incluso pues, la gente tiene restricciones para ir a la escuela diariamente. Vimos como los niños no podían acceder a la escuela por la que accedían normalmente. Es todo porque se instalaron allí 400 colonos judíos. 400 colonos en una población de 156.000 habitantes que condicionaron, que cambiaron la vida Das Palestinas et Palestinos de Brom. On a le sentiment que la situation chaque jour devient plus complexe et il y a vraiment des tensions qui restent très très fortes et qui restent refoulées par la répression, uniquement par la répression et non pas parce qu'il y aurait une situation qui s'améliorerait d'une façon ou d'une autre. La ville de Hebron est divisée en deux parties. La plus importante partie est sous l'occupation israélienne directement jusqu'à ce moment. So we have 102 checkpoints surrounding the old uh, uh, town and uh, everybody, every Palestinian wants to enter or uh, to deliver any kind of services for the Palestinians there uh, should uh, take a permission from the Israeli center. We are passing into H2, the restricted part of Hebron where settlers attack the people every day and the closed shops, the closed apartments, the closed markets. And this is the main checkpoint, which is, you know, you know, check, you know, preventing the people from living normally in this side. So we will pass this checkpoint and it's one of the 20 checkpoints in Hebron. And everybody has to go through Everybody. If you go to school, if you, have, if you go, go to university, if you go to your work, if you want to do shopping, you know, daily shopping, you have to pass the checkpoint. I pass this checkpoint more than 10 times a day. Yeah. Maybe now they were closed. Nobody knows. But you know, at least a week, uh, once a week. Okay, let's pass it. Okay, I will take it when I come back, okay? Why, why you are nervous? What's going on? What's going on? Okay, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Tell me. 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 Understand English? Hello, hello, hello. 
This is what's happening all the time, like this. Even we were lucky because you were with us. You know, usually the soldiers are allowed to detain me or detain any Palestinian for three hours. And usually they, they, they tell us, okay, three hours, you wait at a checkpoint three hours. You know, it means three hours. Three hours and three hours and three hours. It's every day like this. And they arrest, you know, here, every day almost uh, one or two Palestinians. For nothing. It's like every this. Day. Yeah. Every day. And, yeah, every day. And if we the West Bank city of Hebron is a flashpoint in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Settler activity has led to violence against Palestinian civilians, destruction of Palestinian property, and abuse of Palestinian rights under international law. Discriminatory privileges for settlers further compound these abuses and create an environment in which settlers can act with apparent impunity. Limitaciones de movimiento para que esa rúa, a esa llamada Shujada Street, esté pechada, haya dos caminos, un para los palestinos y para los colonos judíos, una estrada asfaltada, una estrada que evidencia que hay una división, que evidencia que hay una discriminación manifiesta. Arriba hay un colono, la su rúa, construida especialmente para él, y aquí va la gente palestina, totalmente separada. On vient donc de traverser Hebron, on a vu que c'est une ville magnifique qui a un potentiel économique énorme et ce potentiel n'est pas du tout mis en valeur. Les gens sont dans une situation de souffrance énorme et ensuite quand on franchit cette ligne de démarcation, on voit de l'autre côté un endroit désert, enfin tout ça est irréaliste. This was the main street in Hebron, it was full of shops, it was the center of the city and, and city life and now as you can see it's closed. Not only are the shops closed, but the whole street is closed to any Palestinians. I can stand here because I'm not Palestinian. And the Israeli settlers can use this street, the soldiers use this street, the police who are here to look after the settlers use this street. But if the Palestinians want to travel down this way in the city, then they have to go up behind this wall and through the graveyard. It really is a system like apartheid. They destroyed many shops in 2000 and they rebuilt them again, but the uh, army kept them closing. And then when, when the shop closed, he lost everything. All his income was lost after they closed his shop. That's just so unacceptable. Um, I think we were, were all shocked by that and uh, I don't think that people outside uh, know that that is going on. I don't think they realise to what extent there is segregation and discrimination here. Freedom of movement is a prerequisite for accessing basic human needs such as health care, education, government institutions, workplaces, and for maintaining social, cultural and family ties. The Israeli army has enforced systematic movement restrictions which have become effectively permanent in some cases. These restrictions impact upon most aspects of Palestinian life and violate many of their basic rights and entitlements under international law. Hay toda una política de restricciones de los movimientos a través de los llamados checkpoints, a través de los numerosos controles, las barreras. Hay nada más y nada menos que en el territorio palestino 521 unidades, espacios físicos, impedimentos que fan que cada día para ir a escuela, para ir a trabajar, para ir a ver a un familiar, tengan que pasar esos controles. Nos mismos también os vimos, os sufrimos, y eh, e desde luego pues fue un ejemplo de lo que pasa y sufre diariamente el pueblo palestino. En los dos días que viajamos, we were stopped at checkpoints. Um, once I went to get off the bus, and the, the bus was searched. The second time we we didn't have to get off the bus, but we were stopped and held up in a checkpoint. That was 
as visitors, um, not living here, but still having our schedule disrupted by the, the checkpoints. People living here, of course, have that all the time, every day, several times a day. Israeli checkpoints in the occupied West Bank have become part of everyday life for the thousands of Palestinians who must pass through them daily. They are a form of collective punishment turning Palestinian cities into prisons. But these closures in the West Bank do not consist only of military checkpoints and partial military checkpoints, but also of earth mounds, trenches, roadblocks, road gates, and above all, one of the largest separation barriers in the world. The mur uh, qui a été érigé ces dernières années est la preuve que la question d'Israël et de la Palestine, au lieu d'aller vers des solutions, va vers uh, une aggravation. Uh, C'est un problème qui est pour nous, il faut toucher du doigt, car on voit bien comment uh, la réalisation de ce mur symbolise l'impasse politique dans laquelle Israël enferme la question palestinienne et dans laquelle en même temps elle enferme tout l'ensemble méditerranéen et toute l'Europe car l'ensemble méditerranéen c'est un espace qui est décisif pour l'avenir de l'Europe. Tivemos ocasión de ver o muro da vergoña, de ver como divide a población palestina, de ver como fai unha división entre israelíes e palestinos, de ver como se estende 700 km por todo o país como divide familias, como divide vidas, como divide a economía. This giant wall has been built within the territory of the West Bank, rather than along the Green Line, which is the de facto internationally recognized border based on the Armistice Line of 1949. Many Palestinian communities have been divided, or in some cases, whole neighborhoods have been completely cut off from the rest of Jerusalem by the route of the wall. One of the most important things of this greater Jerusalem concept is to create, as Netanyahu, as Olmert, as Barak, as all of their formers have repeatedly say, to create such a huge Jerusalem that it would be impossible to divide it. When the time will come to finally put the card of Jerusalem on the negotiation table, Israel can argue that dividing Jerusalem will actually harm her civilians. The more that you build around it, the more difficult it will be to separate it and having East Jerusalem as the capital of a future Palestinian state all of these enclaves will exist without having geographic continuity between one each other, surrounded by settler development. Et la politique de l'établissement des colonies par Israël crée des situations intenables. On l'a vu tout à l'heure. Il n'y a pas un moment où on ne ressent pas des très fortes tensions, des tensions qui ne peuvent que porter en germe une aggravation des situations. Et c'est une politique tout à fait responsable d'Israël que de vouloir avoir au sein du futur État palestinien des colonies de populations qui viennent d'Israël et qui ici compliquent la situation, créent des tensions et empêchent toute évolution pacifique du conflit. Everything is connected. You know that game, Connect the Dots? Pretty much the same thing here in Jerusalem. You see maybe a settlement here, a police station here, another settlement here, and you don't always understand why are they placed there? What's the point? But I mean, settlements is never what they seem to be. It's always what's going to surround them. And if you have a settlement slowly, you'll have another neighborhood uh, built to this settlement, and then another settlement, and then there's a corridor connecting between the settlement, and then uh, a road connecting between them. And slowly you see these dots connecting, expanding, and annexing all the land surrounding it. It's exactly what we can see here. 
3,500 housing units planned to be developed on that area. Since 1967, Israel has established about 150 settlements in the West Bank, including in East Jerusalem, in addition to some 100 outposts erected by settlers without official authorization. In my opinion, Israel is killing the very last opportunity of two-state solution because of its expansionist policy of settlement building and uh, land appropriation and annexation. What we face today is uh, a possibility of the destruction of the two states option. And the only solution then will be one state solution. Of course, the problem is Israel is consolidating not only the longest occupation in modern history, but actually a system of apartheid that is much worse than the apartheid system that prevailed in South Africa at one point of time. Both sides, they don't make much of a progress towards this idea of a state, two-state solution, and this is a tragic and very sad situation. The only way to solve this occupation, to allow Israel to live in peace with and security, to allow the Palestinians to have their own free state, is by the two-state solution. We have to start the solution of the two-state, otherwise it will be too late. We, are, we have really one, two, three years before it becomes impossible to divide the land into. That's why we in the Labour Party, we believe that, that the uh, Palestinian problem has to be solved through the Palestinian state. Otherwise, unfortunately, there will be one state for Israelis and Palestinians, and I don't think it's the best idea we can find. La seule solution réaliste, celle qui porte en germe un autre avenir, c'est deux États. C'est la solution qui est sur la table depuis 20 ans et sur laquelle on n'avance pas d'un iota. Alors, en n'avançant pas d'un iota, on finit par faire émerger euh, des attitudes qui sont en fait des impasses. Et quand on rentre dans les impasses, le plus difficile, c'est d'en sortir. La partie dominante, c'est Israël, qui a l'appui de la communauté internationale la plus puissante, notamment les États-Unis. Et euh, c'est à elle de changer d'attitude pour sortir ne pas justement se laisser piéger dans de telles impasses et essayer de construire enfin une solution politique. Il y a un plan systématique, organisé, une stratégie politique totalement pensée pour détruire les droits du peuple palestinien. Eso ejemplifica en numerosas eh, causas de vida diaria. Por ejemplo, la política de asentamientos que está realizando o Estado de Israel en Jerusalén Este, en toda Cisjordania, también en Gaza, política de asentamientos dos colonos judíos que se instalan con total impunidad, con protección, garantiendo y todo tipo de servicios, mientras los servicios básicos no son garantidos a la población palestina. Un ciudadano palestino tiene una media de 20 litros de agua diarios, con cortes, con restricciones. Un colono judío en estos momentos tiene derecho a 400 litros de agua. En el West Bank, uh, Israel extrae almost 90% del agua of the, wa of the water under the aquifers. Uh, Palestinians are left only with 10% of that amount. The extra water the Palestinians need, they actually have to buy back from the Israelis, even though it's their own water. People don't have enough for, for showers, for, for everyday use, things that we just take for granted. Over 60% of Palestinian-owned structures, which were demolished in 2011, due to lack of proper permit, were located in areas allocated to settlements. This is the Silwan area in occupied East Jerusalem, where over 1,000 Palestinians face losing their homes. Israeli settlers have already moved into parts of Silwan in an attempt to take over the town and evict Palestinian families who have lived here for generations. As you see, we are walking in a narrow street. People's life here is very difficult, it's not, not enough easy. They are suffering from daily attacks on them. Their children are arrested. Their, uh, their men has to be high fines for these houses that Israel considered illegal. We want to have a hope. 
if they are chasing us daily, if they raid our houses, if they arrest our children, if they take our, our brothers and, uh, and daughters to jails, this is not a life. This is a hell. En este momento pues hay muchas eh, familias que están esperando o aviso de ser de que sus casas sean demolidas e que además fase con muchísima alevosía llegan de noche no avisan eso tiene un tremendo impacto psicológico en las familias los nenos que tienen miedo o me anu eh, la argumentación de pretexto que Israel n'arrête pas de mettre en avant pour arriver à ses fins, c'est-à-dire la disparition de la présence palestinienne à Jérusalem. Et euh, ces arguments prétextes sont faits en instrumentalisant la communauté internationale euh, à travers l'utilisation des fonds et à travers également euh, les grands thèmes qui sont mis en avant. On dit qu'ici on va euh, supprimer le logement de centaines de personnes pour faire euh, des découvertes archéologiques. Euh, on va avoir ailleurs euh, Ça sera au nom des droits de l'homme qu'on va piétiner les droits de l'homme. This particular community has set up a, a, a communal area, a, a big tent, in fact, where they meet, um, where they focus and plan their campaign, because they are determined to stay there. They don't want to leave their community. They they want to stay there. Their children are there. Their parents are there, um, and yet uh, they are under threat, and they know that any time. There could be a knock on the door and there'll be bulldozers and police and soldiers outside and they, they'll just be moved. This is our land and this is our houses. We are not going to move it. They can do whatever they want. We are staying here, we are born here and we'll die here. Mari refugee camp near Ramallah. The camp's been here since 1948 and there are eight and a half thousand people living in a very small area. Uh, you can see the, the street behind me here is quite narrow and, and not made but some of the streets are very very tiny. The houses are very high, they've, they've built uh, story after story to accommodate members of the family because the people living here simply can't afford to buy homes outside of the camp in Ramallah. It's, they just don't have enough money. The camp is funded by UNRWA, but they provide the, the basic services. The other activities in the camp have to be provided by the people themselves. But of course they are refugees and more than anything they feel very, very strongly about the homes, about the land that their families lost in 1948, the land that still belongs to them. And if the occupation was to end, then they would have their own land, their own homes. That's their hope, that's our hope too. Aquí puede comprobar cómo es el campo de refugiados de Amari, ¿no? cómo está en extrema pobreza, cómo hay una ausencia de economía, cómo están las casas en, en malas eh, situaciones. Este es eh, un ejemplo de las personas que no, as que no se lleve una solución política. Mientras este campo está aquí por más de 60 años, allí enfrente, en aquellas luxosas casas, construyen asentamientos a población judía con total impunidad. Es una situación que no puede se desbloquear que si estas personas que no même pas une carte d'identité, qui ne sont que des réfugiés, il faut qu'ils trouvent un statut. Et pour qu'ils trouvent un statut, il faut que l'État palestinien se crée. Euh, C'est de la nécessité. On ne pourra arriver à des solutions que si on remplit ces préalables. Or aujourd'hui, on repousse les préalables et en repoussant les préalables, on empile des étages sur les étages, des gens sur les gens, des frustrations sur des frustrations et on ne crée pas les conditions d'une solution politique. When we will have our state uh, everything which is called refugee will be deleted from the dictionary because we will not be refugees anymore. We will be living in our own state. All the world 
will know us not just as uh, people who live in West Bank. What what West Bank? I don't know. But uh, will they will we will be known as Palestinians living in Palestine in a place in a in a state on the map called Palestine. Asking for the moon, let us make a choice, let us use our voice, follow the way that we have to travel, follow the way that is one important. Some alone and but the news, make a mother cry, make a people die. This is not in this silly situation, we can build a better future. This is the last visit of our short but very busy trip to Palestine, and there's no better way to finish up than in a school here in the Amari refugee camp with the young boys playing football, enjoying themselves like boys anywhere else, except that they are living in a refugee camp without all of the things that most of us take for granted. But this is the next generation, the generation of the future, and I think that their smiles show that they are full of hope, and we have to believe that we can build a better future. <laughs> Palestine, 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 Palestine,